Rockwell Radio This is DJ Rockwell, and this is number one DJ, and you are tuned in right now to the very first podcast. Welcome to Rockwell Radio. What's up? What's up? What's up? Salam alaikum. What we got to do is share. Share, 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 share. Hit the like button. Follow. Today is all going down. We have work to put together a show for you today. Man, um, I see my brother Ahmed in the building was good. Uh, Whit Williams in the building in the chat room was good. Uh, I see we got audio that's what's up. Uh, we gonna have a time today. Uh, got a lot to talk about, but the first things I wanna talk about, DJ Rockwell, why did you decide to do a podcast. It's a billion dudes online right now with a podcast. Why we need another podcast, yo? Why do we need another brother to be telling us what's on their mind? Fox got talking heads. CNN got talking heads. All up and down my timeline is people talking about their opinion. But this isn't just a regular opinion. In my opinion, I think that when we raise a question that we're going to raise tonight, it's worthy that we get as many people talking about the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan as possible. Now, we all know who the Honorable Louis Farrakhan is. We all know what hip hop is, or do we? We're going to get into a little bit of both tonight. We've got some guests in the building tonight that's going to dig into it and answer the key question. Helping Farrakhan. What is the role of hip hop in our mission? Um, I, before I get into that, uh, I had a chance to hang out with DMC of Run DMC fame yesterday and my man DJ Charlie Chan uh, out of St. Louis. Matter of fact, shout out to DJ Charlie Chan, one of my DJ inspirations. Shout out to G Wiz, one of my DJ inspirations. Shout out to my, my partner, Pei Pei, one of my DJ inspirations. So I got to stand and watch DMC minus run go through all of the hits that raised us. And I stood there and I thought to myself, as I watched this audience of every hue and every background sing every word from my Adidas to Peter Piper to King of Rock and all the hits that we all know. And it made me ask, what is this power of this culture that we call hip hop, do we truly understand it? Are we using it for its best and most useful purpose? I think when we consider what the mission of the Honorable Louis Farrakhan is, what the mission of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is, I think the answer is yet to be seen. Let me read to you a thought before we bring on board our guest. And I'll start every show with this thought or with a thought. If hip hop is a product and expression of counterculture and rebellion of the status quo, it was and is inevitable that it would be attracted to a teaching and teacher whose aim is to expose Satan and ultimately bring down his world. 
So it's inevitable, family, that hip hop and Islam would meet. So this is my first time doing this, so I want y'all to bear with me. Every technology that you see, every graphic that you see, I, I'm figuring that out. I'm figuring it out as I go, but um, bear with me. Bear with us as we try to do something for the people. So, as I said, we want everyone to share the show, like the show, and. This is also streaming as we speak on my YouTube channel. We are driving for 500 subscriptions. So if you're watching, share it via YouTube and hit like, hit the notification button. So when we do the Rockwell Radio Show, you'll know that we're on live. So let's get to it. Let's get to it. Again, the show topic tonight, we're trying to help the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. He's got a great mission to raise the dead. If hip hop is a language spoken all over the world, what is the role of hip hop to help the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in that mission? Today we have in the house to join us, we've got Jihad Hassan Muhammad who's gonna join us later. Jihad Muhammad founded or co-founded the Dynasty Hip Hop Inc. out of St. Louis, more on him later. Later. You'll hear from Enoch Muhammad, founder of the Hip Hop Detox. Later, you'll hear from Hashim Hakim, one of the dopest hip hop recording artists in the nation. But right now, let me introduce to you and read a little bit about the guest I want to introduce to you right now. I want you to put your hands together for a brother who is not just a professional in hip hop, I call him an expert. This brother, and I don't have my, I think I missed my paperwork, but I wanna just tell you what I know. This brother out of DC, representative of the Zulu nation, moved on, became a, member of the Nation of Islam. Not only is he a student of hip hop, he taught hip hop. Established hip hop classes and exhibits in the institutions of the East Coast. This brother is a historian of the art, of the culture. Please welcome to the Rockwell Radio Show, my brother and yours, B-Boy Atone the hip hop historian. Black man. Peace. I, I'm trying to go through my work and get over this little stage fright I got, and I didn't have my info right. So I'm gonna keep it moving, black man. Yeah, no problem. Now, in addition, with us for the first segment to discuss the question, You've seen him on the cover of The Final Call. You've seen him on the webcast from Chicago. He is a mentor to many. He is a frequent or was a frequent, if I'm correct, a four-time contributor with morning show host Steve Harvey on his ranch and mentoring the youth. And his program has no equal that I have seen. I'm talking about none other out of Chicago, Illinois, my brother and yours. Enoch Muhammad from Hip Hop Detox. Brother Enoch. I'm looking, how you doing, brother? How's the black man? I'm looking salam. We thank you, brother. Staying focused and keeping balanced. Oh, we're not done. We got more heavyweights in the green room than I'm about to bring to you right now. This is a brother that actually needs no introduction. This brother and his team having been inspiring youth for now multiple generations and have toured the globe as ambassadors for hip hop and as ambassadors for the message of freedom, justice, and equality. This brother, the original member of the S1Ws of the mighty, mighty, historic and legendary public enemy, please welcome in representation of hip hop for justice, our brother, 
James Bond. Peace, my brother. How you feel? Brother, I'm so honored to have you, brother. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum. Brothers, can we just get to it? Let's do it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, let's do it. Let me get right to it. The first question has three parts. And it'll speak to the show title, which is a question in itself. What is the role of hip hop in the mission if we're helping the Honorable Louis Farrakhan? What is hip hop to you? And what is the mission and is hip hop a viable tool that can help with the mission? If I need to repart, repeat any part of that, let me know. But I'm gonna start with my brother, the B-Boy A-Tone Hip Hop Historian. Yes, could you repeat the first question? And you're the per the, actually the best person to start this question with is, what is hip hop to you? And is it a viable tool to help the Honorable Louis Farrakhan? We're gonna get the obvious out of the way first. Yes, sir. Well, hip hop to me, number one, it's an extension of Islam, actually. I mean, I mean, I have to kind of cut right to the core of it because without the, the Islam and the nation of Islam in particular, there wouldn't be any hip hop. And I think that's something that we have to understand and have to stand on if we want to really help the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in our role and helping him do what he needs to do. So hip hop is a culture. It, I'll give the definition that I, I was given from Africa Bambata, started Zulu Nation and, it, and it's kind of integral with the development of hip hop. He said, hip hop is peace, unity, love, and having fun. And then I would include via the arts or the art of DJing, b-boying, or breaking, emceeing, or rap, and writing, or graffiti. That okay. four core elements are the tools that are used to propagate the culture. Notice the first term that was used in the definition was peace, and Islam is peace. So to me, Islam and peace are one and the same. So just like we, we correct those who misrepresent Islam, who try to represent Islam as anything other than peace, then I feel it's our duty to correct those who misrepresent hip hop as being anything other than peace, unity, love, and having fun. Yes, sir. That's what it would be. That, that, that's how I would answer that first question. Let's take it to Chicago and uh, get this question answered by our brother Enoch Muhammad of Hip Hop Detox. Yes, sir. Well, you know, because of the work that we do and how hip hop detox started and even how I started, you know, when it comes to hip hop, we look at it from a social scientific and even a spiritually scientific way, going back to Amiri Baraka when he was known as Leroy Jones. He wrote a book called Blues People. And in that book, he basically dissected and analyzed all the different forms of music that came out of us as a people during the worst you know, time that we had in chattel slavery, he just tracked all the music that came. So because we couldn't speak our own language, we couldn't use the drum, we had to sing what is known today as gospel music or Negro spirituals. And we put all type of messages in Negro spirituals. And then he went through all the different forms of music. We're talking about ragtime, we're talking about jazz, bebop. And then he said at the end of that book, he wrote that there would be a genre of music that would come out that would be a mere reflection of the condition of the black man and woman in America. So when I read that book, I said, this man was talking about hip hop because it's a mirror reflection. So when we define mm. hip hop, we define hip hop as being truth without boundaries. Mm. Because we define it as being truth without, uh, without boundaries, it embraces, of, co of course, the cultural definition, which my brother, uh, brother Aton was describing, because I remember when I met uh, Africa Bambata here in Chicago and we talked and I told him about hip hop detox and 
you know, the whole idea of what we're doing is saying, look, we have to consider our whole condition and recognize that yes, it's prophetic. Yes, it's spiritual. Yes, it's psychological, it's economics, it's all of that and then some. And so I'm in complete agreement and harmony with what my brother just said so far in that it represents peace. And it also represents, if you disturb our peace, we got the right, according to our teachers, to take a piece. Say that part, say it loud for the ones in the back. We're gonna, uh, first of all, thank sure you brother for joining us. I see my brother in the green room. I don't mean to keep you waiting. Please welcome to the Rockwell Radio Show, the co-founder of Hip Hop for Justice, a brother of whom I'm so, so proud of he and the work brother James Bomb have been doing since 2015. Please welcome to the Rockwell Radio Show, my brother and yours, Miles Muhammad. Brother Miles. Brother Miles, I got your video, but I don't have your audio. Let me. Uh, but, uh, Are you with us, Brother Miles? Yeah, let me let me tell him to turn his mic on. That, that, Brother Miles, are you with us? Okay, he left. Until Brother gets situated, dear Brother James, would you please address the audience with the question at hand? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, a great, a great question. Uh, one of the things that I've learned what hip hop is, is a uh, higher, higher, higher uh, infinite power healing of our people. It's one of the most powerful genres in the world. And that's one reason why the enemy is so after hip hop, because we appeal to the entire youth culture in the world. And it's another reason why they, they are after it as well, is they want to forever keep hip hop 35, they want to make youth up to 35, and, and, and hip hop is 47 years old. How about uh, it? Right now. But one of the, the one of the main things I, I, I would say, you know, as public enemies traveled the globe and we've been to 116 countries worldwide, and some of those countries we've been in over and over and over again. That higher infinite power healing our people. This is what's needed. And to add with what I'm saying with that is how this would help Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And just to just to share this with you, um, I was in a room with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and he said to Public Enemy, um, Public Enemy is to him as Muhammad Ali was to the messenger. Um, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and what we was doing. It's one of the most powerful genres uh, to push our um, agendas and what, what not. See, the enemy, when we first came out, didn't understand how to market it. We pretty much market ourselves and it marketed itself. They didn't understand it. But then in 1991, there was a meeting in Los Angeles where some very prominent people outside of hip hop along with some prominent individuals in hip hop that um, they wanted to change the dynamics of hip hop from where it was positive and put from poor righteous teachers to public enemy to uh brand Nubian and, and uh, quite a few other ones, uh, X clan. They wanted to change that dynamics to what, what Ch my brother Chuck's call uh, BET Booty and Thug Network. Right, right. Uh, and that's, they changed that di dynamics. And that, from that point on, gin and juice was better than getting people what they need from Public Enemy. Mm. Uh, uh, or for that matter, the Booty and Thug Network was promoting more of the, the, um, the gangster rap more so than the positive and the historical uh, platform. If you can remember, and uh, brother uh, B-Boy Atone can, can attest to this here, when hip hop first started it, it was all geared towards 
positivity and uplift. Music is a universal language, so it being positive and being able to uplift, if you get a chance to travel as I travel, you will see how hip hop has affected entire youth culture around the world from Japan. Uh, I was in last year around this time, I was in uh, Jakarta, Indonesia, where it's, they got the largest Muslim population in the world. And the response to hip hop is so incredible. It's just unbelievable where in, in a hip uh, Islamic culture, how hip hop has affected people in that pop in that, but they got 40 million Muslims there. Wow. And they, wow. they see these young people jumping and moving at hip hop. So it's, it's the most effective form of uh, music or genre of music because you can use anything in hip hop and you, whether it's, uh, whether it's rock or rap or whatever form in mm -hmm. which you want to say your lyrics, it, it matches hip hop in that way. So there's no question, it's, it's inevitable and undeniable that there's a connection between this worldwide impactful culture known as hip hop and the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and his student, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. It's undeniable. Having said that, I'm gonna move right to my brother again, who I see is in the green room and I believe he's ready. We're gonna bring him back in, Brother Miles Muhammad. Brother Miles, so are you with us? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Loud and clear. I apologize. I, I was hearing you all the first time and then the audio went out. And so I had to excuse myself to get back on so I didn't miss the, the conversation. Um, and I want to shout out and salute Brother Anthony A. Tone, Brother Enoch, and Hip Hop Detox. Of course, my big brother and partner, James Baum of the legendary Public Enemy and us being together on this beautiful platform on your debut breakout show, DJ Rockwell, the nation's number one DJ. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, brother, I tell yes, you sir. what, your timing is actually perfect because the next question is directly aimed at you. OK. Yes, sir. On your YouTube page. The tagline beneath the title reads as follows, where art meets activism. Yes, sir. After people hear your show, Hip Hop for Justice, what do you want them to take away that they can immediately apply? In other words, what activism do you want to encourage in your listeners? Well, I think first, you know, and, and foremost, brother, um, I have to go back to the root. Um, and I, I don't know if Brother James covered this, um, but the root of, of hip hop for justice comes out of a very brutal uh, murder, outright murder, execution uh, of a young brother named Mario Wood. That it's started December, late December, 2015. Mario Woods was murdered December the 2nd, 2015. And as a member of the Justice for Mario Woods Coalition, uh, which was made up of over 40 uh, organizations, the Nation of Islam, of course, and, and several other uh, religious and community-based organizations. But our student minister here, known at the time as student minister Christopher Muhammad, now student minister Abdul Rashidullah Muhammad, he was really the leading voice on the ground for justice for Mario Woods. And as I was with him, blessed to be with him in the very, 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 beginning of the coalition, the Justice for Mario Woods Coalition. Now, anybody listening or who will hear this in the future should go to YouTube and, and type that name in because you will literally see, in my judgment, the most horrific execution of a black man caught on camera where this young brother, uh, Mario Woods, was shot over 20 times by five out of 10 police officers who had their guns drawn. 
Um, to make a long story short, as we were working, we looked on social media and we didn't really see any outcry like we saw with Mike Brown or like we saw with, with Trayvon Martin or like we saw with Freddie Gray or like we saw with uh, Sandra Bland and others. The murder execution style murder of Mario Woods was basically a media blackout. There was a blackout on it. And, and, and the reason we learned later was because San Francisco was getting ready to host the Super Bowl two months later. That's the Super Bowl that Cam Newton and the Carolina Panthers were in. That was known as the Gold Bowl. And that's important to know because it was the 50th anniversary of the NFL's number one game. So when you're getting ready to host the world coming into your city, you don't want that blemish of seeing one of the sons of San Francisco executed by San Francisco's finest. So there was a nationwide media blackout. We didn't understand the effect of that. So we were working on the ground, but as I looked on social media, I didn't see anybody from black sports and entertainment pushing the justice line for Mario. And so my first phone call was made to Brother James. And I, and I inquired, did he even know anything about it? And I sent him the video. And then from that phone call with Brother James, and this is, I think, what gets to the answer of the question. From that phone call came an idea to have a conference call. Brother Atone was one of the original foundational pillars. The name Hip Hop for Justice comes from him. I didn't make that up. That came from Brother Anthony Atone. Muhammad, the hip hop historian. How about it? And that brother started a Twitter group with the hashtag hip hop for justice. But the name stuck. It's a perfect fit. So what I'm saying is from that engagement with Brother James regarding a brutal murder execution, a severe injustice to this very day, that wound is gaping and open. There is no there's no justice. You may read, well, Mario's mother settled for 400000 or whatever. That doesn't, brother, look, you can settle. Tamir Rice's mother settled for millions. That don't, that, don't, that don't heal that wound. What heals that wound is justice. And, and really, to be honest, it don't heal it because it'll never be healed. She wants her son back. Right. Sandra Bland's mother wants Sandra Black back. Right. You understand? So Mario's mother wants Mario back. And she'll never get him back. So there will always be that empty space. But if we can get active as a people, and I, I heard everybody up to this point, and I love what Brother Atone said about the 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 uh, hip hop from Bambada, peace, Islam, obedience to the will of God, and as a result of that obedience, that practitioner enters into a state of of peace well we can all attest that the black community is in the state of opposite or other than peace so there's something missing obedience and submission is an action taken and you call that person that takes that action muslim yes sir so as a result of inactivity great inactivity whether it be obedience to the will of god or just taking a stand when you see a injustice our 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 communities as the minister said we really don't have a lifestyle we live in a death style we have a death there's a culture of death in the black community so what we want people to 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 do is, is mm. get active and see that in our unity is our strength. And in our unity, that's the key to our success. So you don't need to be one crying in the wilderness for justice. Colin Kaepernick took that knee and to be quite honest with you, brother, not only was it the Justice for Mario Woods coalition that stood with Colin Kaepernick long before the world stood with him, long before it was popular, but hip hop for justice was banging the hashtag hands off Kaepernick first. Come on. That's a matter of record. Activism. And it was our student minister on behalf 
of our illustrious leader, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who spoke with Colin Kaepernick and made a connection and let him know he's not standing alone. At that, I'm talking about at that time when it was not popular to take that stand. So I think, brother, to be honest with you, man, that, that the, the key thing for us is to is to activate agents of social change in our community. That's what I see on, on, on top of the many other things that our brother Enoch does with hip hop detox. He <laughs> activates the youth in particular, yes, in particular the youth. But it's all about activation. And there's a lot speaking activation, but now we have to catch up to that word. And, and so we just want to be a part uh, you know, of, of that effort to activate our people and, and for our people to see that when you take a stand like Nick Cannon took or Ice Cube or or uh, Stephen Jackson or any of our brothers and sisters who take stands against injustice, they need to know they're not standing alone, but they got an army standing with them. Rockwell Radio Wolverine. Radio. I'm listening Video. to DJ Rockwell. Holla!